what the black man and woman needs to know about the nation, about the world, about themselves. Mohammed Speaks It. To order your 12-issue subscription to Mohammed Speaks newspaper, 313-371-7033. 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie is the grand champion of all bean pies. The rich flavor and smooth texture takes this pie to a whole new level of delicious. One bite and you'll understand why people all over the country call daily to order Kareem Bean Pie. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie. This bean pie is delicious. Mohammed Speaks presents Messenger Elijah Muhammad's Teachings by Minister Khalil Shabazz every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 12609 East McNichols Road in Detroit. Brother Sister in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, and Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, and Merciful, Soul Master's Day, gentlemen, in which we now live, the alone that we serve, and the alone seek for thine help and aid. O Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou spell thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he allows one God, allows he of whom nothing is independent but upon whom we all depend. He begat us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is heard to be served, worship or praise besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. I mean, we like to acknowledge the brothers and sisters that extended us the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. We have Brother Kareem Muhammad of New Jersey, Sister Hala Brooks of California. We have Brother Mustafa and Sister Sharice Ali from Ohio. We have Brother Captain Hakeem and the Believers in Richmond. I like to say in the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, and in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I like to greet the brothers and sisters with the Nation of Islam's greeting words, peace of Assalamu alaikum. Today we like to talk about the beast and the lamb. We had an honorable Elijah Muhammad is the biblical lamb. We got Bishop Nathaniel is Pharaoh's magicians. And we have the biblical beast, which I put uh, President Roosevelt and Trump. Because the reason why I put Roosevelt, the messenger actually breaks down Roosevelt and Truman as being the beast in Revelations. He actually breaks down their history and how they align with the beast in Revelations. So let's start with uh, March 7th, 1959. Pittsburgh Carrier. The title is The Revelations Beast. It comes from Revelations 17 and 8. It says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is this is the messenger now what does all of this mean because today it's not just important for us to tell the black man the truth. We must tell him where the truth come from. Yes, because later on, we're going to talk more about bus stop bishop. Because this week, now I don't think that the brother meant nothing by it. But it's still frustrating. 
a brother inboxed me this week and asked me, do I think that the messenger's ministers would be calling Bishop a nigger over the roster? That's what he asked. Now, the reason why, because I don't believe that he had any kind of ill intentions or nothing like that. But I feel like it's, it could be more people who might feel like that. Because I call Bishop Nathaniel a nigga. And I mean what I say. All praise due to Allah. But it might be some people that's wondering, would the messenger allow Khalil to call Bishop Nathaniel a nigga over the roster? So we going to deal with that a little later. But let's go with the messenger. He talks about this beast in Revelations that's going to rise from a bottomless pit. What does that mean when it say the beast is going to rise from a bottomless pit? Because we always got to remember the white man wrote the Bible to hide the truth from the black man. We got to always remember that. They didn't write the Bible, King James and these scholars, for us to just see the truth and say, oh, that's talking about this and that's talking about that. They wrote it to hide it. So they told us that John the Revelator saw a beast coming out of a bottomless pit. Now let's go on even further than that. Because it's a lot we got to break down. The messenger says, he says, last week we discussed the fifth verse of this chapter 17, the mystery Babylon, of the revelations of John, and in parentheses he has Yaku. Got to remember that. That is a very important fact when we talk about the Bible. Because a lot of the books in the Bible have unknown authors. The white man don't know who the author is. So he gives the book a name. So the white man said that John the Revelator was on the island of Patmos in exile when he wrote the book of Revelations. But the messenger said, the book of Revelations was written by Yaku. All praise is due to Allah. Now let's go to the messenger teaching us about Revelations being written by Yaku. This comes from the October 20th, 1956 Pittsburgh Carrier. And it's called the 144,000. That comes from Revelations Chapter 14, the messenger says, he says, let us understand what we are reading. It is prophecy and symbolic of the future that was seen in a vision by Yaku, the father of the white race, which he saw on the island of Patmos or Palan 6,000 years ago. He was warning his people of that which would come to them at the end of their time. That's what we got to remember when we talking about revelations. This is why the messenger, when he talked about the white race, he said we knew what they were going to do before they were grabbed. Because we know that Yaku took 59,999 people to the island of Patmos or Pilon to graft the white race. Right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that it took 600 years to graft the white race from the black man. We also know that Yaqub only lived 150 years. That's a fact. So Yaqub never saw the white 
man. Because the messenger taught us that it took 200 years of destroying all the black to get a brown race. Yes. It took 200 years. So that's 50 years after Yakub was dead. He said it took another 200 years to graft the brown into yellow by destroying the brown. Then he said it took another 200 years to graft the yellow into a white race. He said once it got to the white, it was no more a rich. Yes. It was weak and weak. So Yaku, the black scientist who discovered that the black man had two people in him. One was black and one was brown. So the messenger says, Yaku discovered that if he separated the brown from the black and grabbed the brown into his last stage, he would build or make an enemy for the black man, which would be the white race. Mm -hmm. So when Yaku was exiled on the island of Pilon called Patmos in the Bible, he got a vision. He saw the end of the white race mm -hmm. while he was on the island of Pilon. The white man said it was John who was exiled. But it was really Yakub. Yes. Yakub saw the beast and Yakub saw the lamb. Mm -hmm. That's what Yakub saw. <laughs> he knew the end of the white race before they was even grabbed. Now let's go on with the message. He says last week we discussed the fifth verse of this chapter, 17, the mystery Babylon of the revelation of John or Yakub. I hope you will agree with me on the truth of the vision that John Yakub saw concerning the final war between his people, the white race and the people of God, the black nation. So that's what the final war is between. It's between God and the devil. Yes, sir. The devil is the white race and the God is the black nation. <laughs> the honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that there's always one out of the people who is supreme in knowledge, supreme in wisdom, and supreme in understanding. That one black man we call the supreme being but that supreme being is also a man like every member of the black nation. Yes. So the messenger said, I hope you will agree with me. In Yaku's vision of the final war between his people, the white race, and the black nation. So the messenger says, he says the beast refers, referred to in the eighth verse is the same beast mentioned in the third and seventh verse of the same chapter 17 this beast a people was already in existence before this one that shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and is in power in europe and asia this actually refers to all European white powers who are over the world of the black, brown, yellow, and red nations. So the messenger taught us when he taught us the facts. Excuse me. He taught us the white race in general and he taught us the white race specific. Yes. So when we talking about this beast, that's coming from the bottomless pit. In general, it represents all of the white race of Europe who rule over the black, brown, red, and yellow people. Yes. That's in general. But it has a specific meaning. The 
passenger says, when she, America, was found, she was a place of woods and plains with unintelligent people living and roaming over her four sides. Now she has become a wilderness of sin, a place of disorder, complexity, perplexity, perplexity the bottomless pit, a base smoke, unfathom, unfathomable, deep as the sea. That's what it's talking about when it's talking about a bottomless pit. It's talking about the filth and indecency of the white race in America. That's what they saw or that's what they wrote describing the white race of America. A bottomless pit. So the messenger goes on. He says the wickedness of America cannot be measured or weighed or sounded out. Her evil is ever on the increase. That's the white race. A bottomless pit. All praise is due to Allah. As deep as the sea. Just bottoms. Because you can't measure the filth and indecency of the white race. You can't sound it out. You can't wait. So they say it's just a bottomless pit. You will never reach the bottom. You will never be able to see all that the white man can do with his evil intentions and his evil mind. It's just a bottomless pit. So the messenger goes on. He says she used to think that the two oceans, Pacific and Atlantic, were her security against a foreign enemy attack until better navies and air power were built. It is a different story today. The beast is to rise out of the bottomless pit of evil to increase it and bring about her doom. The beast that we have under discussion is the ruler or the presidents of the people. That's what it's talking about when John the Revelator or Yakub said he saw a beast rising out of a bottomless pit. Specifically, it's talking about the presidents of the United States. But in general, it's talking about all the white race of Europe and they ruling powers over the black, brown, red, and yellow races. So the messenger goes on. He said Mr. Roosevelt was a Navy man. His power rose up in the sea. His navy quickly healed the wound received at Pearl Harbor. His successor, Mr. Trump, Mr. Truman, a farmer, power rose up on land, was seen coming out of the earth, and was responsible for the dropping of the first atomic bomb on the, on the Asiatic nation and frightened the whole world. And the nations began to say, who is able to make war with him? Revelations 13 and 4. Of course, as you know, the world is no more afraid. So this was the message. Long before niggas like bus stop, the messenger was explaining it to the black man. Letting us to know the truth behind all that was hidden from us for 369 years or 79 years. So the messenger told us specifically about President Roosevelt because the book of Revelations also talks about a beast rising out of the sea. So the messenger talks about how Roosevelt was the Navy man. The white man or the Japanese dropped the bomb or they attacked Pearl Harbor. That was during Roosevelt's time. 
So Roosevelt squashed the Japanese with the Navy. That was Roosevelt. Because he quickly had a counterattack for Japan. But true, he was the one who dropped the atomic bomb. He was the one who powers came out of the earth. The messenger break this all the way down for us and gives it to us in plain language. So now you have Yaku who also saw a lamb. Who is this lamb talking about? Let's go to the November 22nd, 1958 Pittsburgh Carrier. The title is called The Dreadful and Terrible Beast Who is Able to Make War with the Beast. The messenger says, The symbolic name given to the last apostle or messenger of Allah, God, has been wrongfully applied to Jesus of 2,000 years ago by Bible students. For Jesus' life and ministry were only a prototype of the anti-typical last messenger of Allah God. So Jesus' life, as the Holy Quran says, was a sign. This is why when you have in the Bible, they don't give us a history of Jesus. They give us a gospel According to John, a gospel according to Luke, a gospel according to Matthew, and a gospel according to Mark. This is a story about Jesus. So the messenger says in this story, they mixed the history of Jesus of 2,000 years ago. That's one history. Then they mix the history or the prophecy of the Messiah or the Mahdi. That's another history. Then they mix the history of the last messenger. Then they mix the history of the black man. All of that is mixed in in the story of Jesus. But how was we to know that? We was made deaf, dumb, and blind. By the white man. So we didn't know. That when it's talking about Lazarus. Being dead for four days. We didn't know that was talking about the black man. We thought it was talking about a real human being. Who was physically dead. And Jesus rose him up from the grave. That's what we thought. But the messenger. See that's talking about the black man. The black man been dead mentally for 400 years. The black man is the one who has a napkin over his eyes, which means we blind. We blind, deaf, and dumb. The black man, the one who got on grave clothes. The black man's condition stinks in the nostrils of God. That's how the whole nation of black people that we stink. Like we've been dead for 400 years. That was talking about our condition. But how was we to know? How was we to know that Jesus didn't die on the cross? Jesus didn't die on calf. It wasn't no crown of thorns that was put on his head. How was we to know all of that? How was we to know that Jesus did not rise from a physical death? All of this was put in story form to talk about the last and greatest messenger, the Messiah of the Mahdi, Jesus' history, and the black nation. All praises due to Allah. So the messenger goes on. He says the lamb, apostle could not have been physically slain. The word referring to his physical and mental condition as he was seen in the midst of the beast. That's what it's talking about when it talks about the lamb. 
It's not talking about the lamb being physically slain or physically dead. It's talking about the condition, the mental and physical condition of the last messenger in the midst of the beast. Because the honorable Elijah Muhammad is not a lamb. The white man is not a beast. But when you have poetic and symbolic language, the messengers say the white man had poets to write the Bible. And the one thing we know about poets is a poet says one thing, but he means something else. Right. So when the white man put lamb, that's saying one thing, but you mean something else. The white man is not talking about a real lamb. He talking about the characteristics of a lamb. When the white man says the beast, that's poetic language. That's saying one thing, but meaning something else. When the white man is talking about a beast, he's not talking about a real physical beast. He's talking about the characteristics of a beast. So just like a lamb, being in the midst of wild, hungry beasts. That was the honorable Elijah Muhammad in the midst of the white race of America. So the messenger goes on. He says, as we read of this symbolic lamb in Revelation 5 and 6, it says, as if he had been slain, not slain, only look as if it were slain. As one looks at a lamb among beasts of prey, bruised and torn by the savage beast. So that's talking about the message. He was not actually slain, but he looked as though he was slain because the messenger was in the midst of wild beasts. So, is talking about him being bruised and torn by these wicked white beasts. That is exactly what the revelator saw. So the messenger goes on. He says the choice of our last messenger in the vision of the revelator Yakub looked as if he had been slain, which means that the blood of the lamb was mixed with the blood of the beast, was made blind, deaf, and dumb to the knowledge of the beast and kind. That's another fact. The black man's blood is mixed with the blood of the white man. Yes. The white man had us under their control for 400 years, plus years now. Yes. He mixed his blood with our blood. The messenger taught us, he said the white race is weak bone, weak blood, and stale face. He said they are 100% wicked and evil. Yes. He said the white race was made or grafted to be destroyed. Yes. Ain't no save in them. They so weak blood that it causes them to be 100% wicked and evil. They can't be trusted. They are the masters of the science called trick knowledge. Yeah. They love murder. They love to rob. They love to rape. They love to destroy. All of this the white race does by nature. Mm. So the messenger taught us, they are a people who were made to be destroyed. But then you have a lamb. In the midst of these type of people. And because a beast. Is so capable. Of destroying a lamb. A lamb has no defense. Against a beast. We are a people who have no defense at all. Against the white race. They robbed us of a knowledge of self. They've been our only teacher for 400 years. We love them when they hate us. That's 
That's our condition. We like a lamb in the midst of a beast. So this is what the revelator saw. But he goes on to say, the messenger says, the outstanding and most amazing thing about this slain lamb is that, the, is that he has seven horns and seven eyes. We talked about horns last week. In the book of Habakkuk, it says that that uh, holy one that was coming from Mount Paran, verse 4 says he had horns coming out his hands. More symbolic language. What the black man know about that? If you tell the black man that it's going to be a man or this holy one coming from Mount Paran. First of all, the black man don't know where Mount Paran is. So that got us like we don't know what to think when it say this holy one is coming from Mount Paran. Then it say he got horns, seven horns coming out his hand. That make him more unidentifiable to us. Because we don't know where Mount Paran is. We ain't never seen no man with horns coming out. That sound like some strange being to us. This is how the white man wrote. So they make God strange. They make God a mystery. Then they make this lamb a mystery. They say that the lamb has seven horns and seven eyes. Who would have ever seen a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes? That's another beast. So the messenger says, he says, Revelations 5 and 6, which made him spiritually able to see and recognize God and his power over the beast and gain the knowledge of the seven wisdoms of Allah, which serve as horns of power to oppose the beast. See verse 12. All oh, praise is due to Allah. So that's the amazing thing about this lamb. Even though the lamb has no defense, the lamb been robbed of a knowledge of self. But what's amazing about the lamb? He got seven horns and seven eyes. This is them saying that he was able to recognize God and the power that God has over the beast. Yes. That's this lamb. Yes. This little lamb. <laughs> the little lamb. Said in 19 or July 4th, 1930. He said God came. God came in person. God came to Black Bottom, Detroit. He came to Black Bottom, Detroit, seeking to save that which is lost. So the messenger said, God was in Detroit for a whole year before he became acquainted with God in 1931. The messenger said, when he first saw God, when he first listened to him teach, he said at the end of the meeting, he shook Master Farad Muhammad's hand. He said he looked at him and said, you the one that the Bible been talking about, that we've been waiting for for 2,000 years. That was the little lamb. He has seven horns, seven eyes. He say he was dumb, but he was smarter than the rest of us. Because he was able to recognize God. Yes. That says a lot about the message. Mm -hmm. That's why I call this no good nigga bus stopper nigga. <laughs> I want this nigga to know what he is. Because the nation of Islam has lost its military bank. Ain't nothing military or militant about Muslims in this generation. But me, as a sincere believer in the message, if all my life will be 
is just an example of a believer. I'm satisfied. That's what I want to be to niggas like Busta. Yes, sir. I don't care what Muslim like it. I don't care what Muslim agree. The messenger said. He said, work hard. And pretty soon, you will get a believer like yourself. All I can do as a believer is get a believer like myself. You get a believer like yourself. A believer like myself don't see nothing wrong with calling a nigga a nigga. A no good nigga. A lousy scoundrel nigga. That's what he is. He need to know. He need to know it from a Muslim who love the message. Yes, sir. I want all them and I, you, I see to see what it look like to love the messenger of God. Yeah. That's what I want them to see. I want them to see how a Muslim who love the message solely depends on Allah. Yes. We don't care how many with this hypocrite Lewis. We don't care how many with you the messenger said our lie is sufficient. That's what yes, sir. So our lie is sufficient for us. Yes. The messenger told us he came in 1930. That's good enough for us. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about would the messenger allow me to call bus stop a nigga over the rush? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. Let's go to 1934. I only brought one example because I think this one example is good enough. But if more people want more, we can talk about more. As a matter of fact, if you want more examples, next week we can devote the whole lecture to talking about how Muslims show niggas what kind of nigga they was. That was with the message. Now let's talk about how Muslims with a messenger show niggas like bus stop what kind of nigga you is. Let's go to 1934. Not 34. 64. To talk about how Muslims used to show niggas like bus stop what kind of nigga you is. This comes from the June 29th 1964, Detroit Free Press. Now, I use this same incident, partly from the Detroit Free Press and the Chicago Tribune, because I want you to know how everybody knew how Muslims got down, how open the history was, how Muslims wasn't ashamed. They just didn't care. Now this, the title of the article says, Negro foes beaten by black Muslims at Harlem Rap. Because, to be honest, I don't think Muslims with the messenger had to call niggas like bus stop nigga. It's not that I feel like whether the messenger allowed them to or not allow them. I believe, from the history I read, that a Muslim minister didn't have to say, this nigga a nigga. Because when the FOI saw a nigga, they showed the nigga what kind of nigga he was. Didn't no Muslim minister have to say, this nigga got a picture of the message. Disrespect. This nigga got a picture of Master Farad Muhammad. Disrespecting because when Muslims saw niggas, they showed the nigga what kind of nigga he is. Mm -hmm. So let's go on with the article. It says two Negroes were beaten by highly trained black Muslim security guards Sunday during a brief outbreak of violence at Harlem Armory where black supremacist leader Elijah Muhammad spoke to a rally of his followers. Now, the ministers was inside. The niggas was outside. 
with highly trained Muslim guards. Let's go on even further. It was several incidents. Let me say that too. I just picked out one or two. It says another Negro. Another Negro. Now it's multiple Negro. Another Negro. That needed to be shown what kind of nigga. You got one Negro. Then another Negro. Another Negro man. Carrying a sign. Which read. Muhammad is a father. Now, with FOI like that, you ain't got to call bus stop bishop a nigga. I wouldn't be calling this nigga a nigga if we had Muslims. But we got few Muslims. So we got to do what we got to do. The messenger said, if you in the wilderness, if you in the woods and you trap, he said you can eat the bark off the tree. We got to eat the bark off the tree. Man, we don't got Muslims like that, no. A must now I don't think this brother meant no harm. But it's frustrating to me to see this nigga bus stop dragging the messenger every week. Yes. And what a Muslim going, do you think that the messenger would allow her? I don't think they would have to. That's what Muslims see. Right. You don't see this nigga. You, let, let's give an example of the disrespect. Because I don't want people to think that the messenger had people just jump on you because we can't defend the teachings of the messenger. I don't want you to think that. So let's show you how the messenger got down. This comes from the February 23rd, 1957, Pittsburgh Carry. It's called Islamic faith is gaining interest throughout America of the lands. This is the Pittsburgh carry. They said Mr. Muhammad's teachings, Islamic faith, is claimed to be the key to the so-called Negroes problems. His challenge to the world to refute the solutions he offers has never been acknowledged by doubting times. What is a doubting time? Because in the Bible, they call it doubting times. Right. Thomas was a disciple of Jesus. But Thomas doubted Jesus. He didn't believe the story when they talk about Jesus was all this and that. So they called him in the story Doubting times. So the messenger called these niggas down times. Yes. All these Uncle Toms who doubt me is not accepting my challenge. Mm -hmm. The messenger that wasn't afraid of niggas like Busta. But niggas like Busta. Since you couldn't stop the messenger with that guy. What they used to try to do is come outside the meeting and try to discourage people from accepting the message. So one of the niggas at the meeting had a sign that said, Muhammad is a phone. So the brother say, look, there go a nigga. The last and greatest messenger is in there teaching the black man, resurrecting him from a mental death. So who is this nigga who got the nerve to come around us with a sign that say Muhammad is a phone? Yes. So let's go show this nigga. We're going to show him what kind of phony Muhammad is. So they whooped his head. Yes, they didn't go and say, brother, you know what? You can't have that sign around here. Why don't you go somewhere else? No. It was on sight. When you see the nigga, show the nigga what type of nigga he is. <laughs> While the ministers and the messenger, all praises due to Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. While the army, them train guards, mm -hmm. is showing niggas for everybody. Mm -hmm. This what a nigga looked like. That's right. This nigga had a sign. This nigga got his head whooped for the rest of the niggas. Why you ain't have, but I want him to know it. 
Don't think you got us food with all this black Hebrew Israelite guy that you talk. The only reason why you survive is because Farrakhan is a hypocrite. Right. Only reason why. But let's go on even further than that. Let's go to what the Chicago Tribune said. No, we ain't finished with the Detroit Free Press. It says another Negro man carrying a sign which read Muhammad is a phone appeared near the armory and received a pummeling from the guards. He took his heels with the placard and vanished. That's why you do these niggas. These niggas really don't have nothing to say to the message. The messenger making you a challenge. The messenger is the first man to ever have question and answer periods after the election. So any one of these niggas like Bus Stop bring Abba Bivens and the rest of the ones like you to the meeting. Any question you have, just ask the messenger. Wouldn't nobody stop the messenger made challenge. So when niggas like Bus Stop was too afraid, nigga ain't got no truth to challenge the messenger. So the messenger start offering these chump niggas money. All right, chump nigga, maybe the money will motivate you. If any one of you can prove one word that I teach that's other than the truth, I give you $10,000 out of my brother's vest pocket. So then, the nigga still wouldn't come. Messages say, I give you $10,000 per word. Nobody show up. So when you have niggas who would come to the meet with a sign talking about Muhammad is a phone, that nigga need his head whooped. Not only would the messenger had a meeting where you can ask questions and answers, if you would write in and request a reprint of any article, they'll reprint the article. The messenger had his home address, the temple address, anywhere where you could write him with questions. Yes. The messenger had radio broadcast, interviews. The messenger had brothers going door to door. The messenger had brothers on the street. He was giving you all opportunity to respectfully challenge him. Yeah. We brothers. Even though this nigga bus stop is a nigga. He our brother. The messenger said every black man that you see is your brother. But like I always say, he also said. You could have an enemy in your own house. That's right. So we know this nigga bus stop. He don't have no truth. To challenge the message. Just like that nigga who had the sign talking about Muhammad is a phone. He didn't have no truth to challenge the message. That's what jealous niggas do. Since they can't challenge you, they try to belittle you. They try to make people think you ain't nothing. Just like this nigga bus stop. This is one of the most disrespect. Other th they say the Holy Quran is toilet paper. That's disrespect. Yes, because I don't argue with Christians because the thing about IUIC, and we wrapping this up, I've been searching for the truth for years. I remember before Bus Stop Bishop now, these disrespectful niggas like him. You could go and sit with the black Hebrew Israelites that was around. You could go to Christians, all of that, and people would just have it would be heated and passionate because that's what you believe, but nobody was disrespecting the other person. Mm -hmm. Christian, when that, when Farrakhan had the million man mark, to show you how the messenger talked for all black people, nothing disrespectful. It was Muslims, Orthodox Muslims, Christians, Jews, gang members. Everybody always came to Muslim meetings, right. even though the messenger gave you that hard truth. But once you heard it, it changed how you thought. Yes. 
The messenger wasn't out to disrespect the Christian. He was just there to tell them the hard truth that will cause them to change the way they thought. So even though a lot of Christians didn't agree with the message, they would come to the meeting. They would come to the rallies. They would become sympathizers. But niggas like bus stop. They say the Holy Quran is told. That's disrespect. Ain't no let's talk about. No, that's a nigga. Now, nah, we're not saying you a nigga because you disagree. You a nigga because you disrespectful. <laughs> then these niggas. This is another. It says a lie lying ASS Muslim type because his rock. Can't save him. More disrespect. We know where do you see Muslims say we and if that's what you believe. Debate one of us. I've been trying to talk to IUIC for years because that garbage they talking about is weak. It's real weak. So I've been trying every time I be I'm going to show on the video when I comment on they little thing, they block me. The brother called me, he didn't want to talk. If you believe we idol worshiping and Islam, why don't you never talk to a qualified Muslim? Because right. they some niggas. Yeah, that's right. that's what it is. So they is. They niggas who see this hypocrite Lewis Eugene. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I see it, I know it, and I'm not, I don't care nothing about how you I see. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to know the devil is our enemy. This nigga bus stop, all right? You might not agree. That's okay. You stay with them. Messages say, how can you say you are friends when you friends with our enemy? That's right. So if you will believe, we telling you this nigga is our enemy. Mm -hmm. So if we see you with this nigga, no harm, no foul. But don't come around us. Farcon is a hypocrite. Yeah. The messengers say after one year of being a hypocrite, the hypocrite is classified with the enemy there. Right. So if you will believe and we see you with this hypocrite, don't come around us. Hey, now let's finish and wrap this up with Chicago Tribune. This is what the Chicago Tribune said. This comes from the June 29th, 1964, Chicago Tribune. It says the only other incident during the rally occurred when Jesus Emmanuel of Philadelphia was attacked by two Negroes as he was passing out anti muhammad literature. So we see this person. Got the Muhammad is a phone. Now you got this person that comes to the meeting to pass out and okay, if that's what you believe, why don't you come in, ask your question, write to the messenger, why are you out there passing out anti-Muhammad literature? Because you a nigga. The messenger said in 1966, we going to post the paper on the video. The message I had on the front page of the Muhammad Speaks. Talking to the brothers and the Muslims in general. He said, you like to be soft and kind to the hypocrites. He said, you may have to learn the hard way. <laughs> message say, I taught you. But you like to, he say, we like to be. He said, you like to be soft and kind to the hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Say, boy, you might have to learn it the hard way. Mm -hmm. We learning it the hard way. Yes. What if? Because everywhere I see bus stop bishop now, they always trying to make a big scene. What if you at the supermarket with your wife and your children? This nigga talking about a lie lying ASS Muslim. Or you, your daughter hit this nigga 
talking about because the messenger got the moon on his face that he worshiped the moon. Or you hear this nigga say that Israelites taught Malcolm. Or you hear this nigga say the Holy Quran is toilet paper. Or you hear this nigga say all the disrespectful stuff they say about the message. Or your daughter see they got a picture of Master Farah Muhammad telling people he a white man. What if your daughter see that? What if she see it and don't say nothing to you? Because you old coward father. You one of these brothers who you, you don't want to call this nigga a nigga. But this nigga will turn your daughter away. This nigga will turn your wife away, your son away, and watch them go back into the mud. But while you are with the, this nigga is a nigga. <laughs> My daughter, don't you listen to this nigga. Mm -hmm. These niggas is only around for a short time. Right. Because the messenger said in my conclusion, this the kind of God we got. The messenger said, he said, Allah will allow the leaders of the opposition to try to carry out their plan they had against the messenger. He said, but Allah will cause them to about face. And everything they wished, not everything they said, not everything that they did, but what niggas like Bustock got in his mind and he ain't shared with nobody. He said, everything that they wished upon the messenger, Allah will reverse it and put it on them. I just want to be around when Allah reverse it and put it on this nigga. Yes, sir. I want everybody. I'm that kind of Muslim. Mm -hmm. I want to see that nigga. Everything fail him like Farrakhan. Everything fell in this hypocrite. Yes. The messenger hit him with chastisement after chastisement. Mm -hmm. Messenger said about a hypocrite. He said Allah does not punish you with death. Right. This is my conclusion. Allah don't punish us with death. The messenger says, Allah will cause the hypocrite to wish she was dead. He said, Allah causes death to flee from the hypocrite. He said, because death will take them out they miss. So we saw this hypocrite Farrakhan trying to do the same thing bus stop doing. He thought he was successful. This hypocrite had a million man march. This nigga bus stop ain't even on the left. Don't nobody talk about that nigga but other Israelites. Don't nobody say, oh, look at why he cleaning up the black man. Look at what they doing. Look at the daughters of Sarah. Don't nobody talk about them. They was talking about Farrakhan. This man go on world friendship tours. So Farrakhan's followers looking at us. Like, why y'all ain't down with the Hamas, the middle of Louis Farrakhan? I lie with him. We the believers. It was hard. You hate to see them attracting all them people. But one thing we know, messenger to messenger. It look all good now, but the messenger say, in me, you will wish you was never born. Now look at that hypocrite. Hypocrite ain't successful. He mixing in Scientology. He mixing in Orthodox Islam. He doing he running out of tricks. But this nigga was on top of the world. He used to say, if we don't follow him, we ain't following the message. We just some hypocrite. Look at him now. Same for bus stop bitch. This nigga think he can just disrespect the message. Them nigga Muslims ain't gonna do nothing. Or I disrespect Elijah Muhammad, then I tell him. Uh, I'm still your brother and I love you. Weak Muslims go for that. That nigga is an enemy. Yes. He's an enemy to our law and he's an enemy to the message. <laughs> Messengers say we will be trapped. Yes. That's what he said. He said at least once a year. Right. We all will be trapped. To see if we were. He said the people before us was trapped. Yes. So what do we think? We think we ain't going to be tried. They was tried. Right. 
The believers who followed the messenger was trapped. The believers when Noah was trapped. Lot was trapped. Everybody was, we being tried now. That's right. Master Farai Muhammad sees. He saw them thousands of black people talking about, oh, praise is due to Allah for honorable Lot Muhammad. Mm -hmm. When the messenger was making life easy for you. Yeah. When you could come to Muhammad's temple and get a job. Mm -hmm. If you was a truck driver, you could get a job. Mm -hmm. If you was a farmer, an engineer, all oh, kind of jobs Muhammad had. Yeah. Oh, praise is due to Allah. For the honorable life. Nah. He ain't so popular now. I bet you if, if Jeremiah and them called a nigga a nigga over the rock, wouldn't no more say, what the man? No. What'd he do? Mm -hmm. Where that nigga at? Right. That's how they would have. It wouldn't be like, I wonder. What the messenger? No. Them brothers love the messenger so much that that news probably wouldn't even get to the messenger till he read it in the newspaper. Messenger wasn't sitting out there. He told us, I don't watch. I just teach. That's right. He said they know the truth. He said the nation can go on from here. They got the truth just the same. That's right. He wasn't watching brothers. Mm -hmm. He knew brothers loved him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to go watch. Hey, that's a nigga right there. There go one right. No, when you see a nigga, your love for the messenger make you call. Hey, look at this nigga. <laughs> well, brothers and sisters. We don't want to prolong the time. So I leave you as I came in the nation of Islam. Greeting words, peace of Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Enjoying the show? Help keep us on the air. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. To make a donation. Brothers and sisters, we rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, soul master's day of judgment in which we now live, the alone that we serve and the alone seeks for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou spell thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say here lies one God. Allah is he of whom nothing is independent but upon whom we all depend. He begat us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is there to be served, worship the praise besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. I mean, the honor of Elijah Muhammad taught us not to do anything to anyone that we wouldn't have done unto ourselves and treat everybody right, even the devil. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much.